Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about arithmetic operations, which is a category of measurements in data. Now, for today's video, we're looking at specifically fractions. So let's begin by taking a closer look at this short description, which tells us some information about what we can expect in fraction questions. So fractions in arithmetic operations focuses on questions utilizing multiple different fractions. Note that a fraction is composed of a numerator and denominator shown below. An understanding of improper, proper and mixed fractions are needed in order to solve these questions. Improper fractions are when the numerator is bigger than the denominator and proper fractions are when the opposite is true. Mixed fractions, on the other hand, are improper fractions transformed into proper fractions with a whole number in front. To do this, you divide the numerator by the denominator and the remainder becomes the new numerator while the quotient becomes the whole number. We see that explained a bit more with these formulas here, and we are also told the method into converting mixed fractions into proper fractions with this formula here. Simplifying fractions may be also required where you will need to find the highest common factor to simplify the denominator and numerator. Questions most commonly involve shaded regions or number sentences. All right, so fraction questions are kind of like an extension or similar to division questions because at the end of the day you're taking two numbers and you're dividing them by the fraction. Now we're told that fractions are always kind of written in this format and what the number on top is called is the numerator and the number on the bottom is called the denominator. So just to remember which number is which, I always kind of remember the fact that the denominator starts with the letter D and D is also for down. So the number on the bottom or the number that is down is the denominator and the whatever is on top is then the numerator. So this concept is important because whether the numerator is bigger than the denominator uh, determines whether or not it is a proper fraction or an improper fraction. So just like we saw in the description when we did the read through, there are two cases where the numerator being larger than the denominator means that it is an improper fraction and the numerator being smaller than the denominator gives us a proper fraction. Now it's called a proper fraction because this is generally the standard of how we want to see fractions as they are written. It's just because saying proper fractions are easier to understand what fraction of a whole is being represented by that fraction we just saw. Whereas an improper fraction, it's a bit more difficult to instantly realize what fraction we're talking about. But the thing with improper fractions is that they are sometimes necessary because they are much easier to do calculations in sometimes. So that is why we've got these two different types of fractions. Now we can also transform improper fractions to look like they are proper fractions and that's where mixed fractions comes into play. If you can divide the numerator by the denominator and see what the remainder is, you can utilize that information and put it into a mixed fraction form. And even though the text looks a bit complicated here with all this uh, formulas, I'm sure it's something that you are familiar with or have done previously. All it is is that you take a mixed fraction. So for example, let's take 17 over 3. All you do is take the, the numerator and divide it by the denominator and see what the result is. 3 goes into 17 five times, giving us 15 and giving us a remainder of 2. So transforming the improper fraction into a mixed fraction just involves us writing down this, this top number here as the whole number, the remainder down here as the numerator and the number we divided by the, the number three as the denominator and that's all that this is talking about and we can also convert or oh, sorry and this formula as well we can also likewise convert the mixed fraction into an improper fraction if that is necessary by simply doing the reverse which is 
taking the whole number, multiplying it by the denominator, and adding the top number, and that gives us the numerator. So, for example, five times three is fifteen. 15 plus 2 is equal to 17. So this becomes the numerator and the denominator stays the same. So we see we've got the numerator we started off with. So all that is is being described in this bottom section here. Now, the last part of the description talked about how it's often required to simplify fractions that we see. And that's just because it's also, again, easier for our brains to understand what fraction we're talking with if we're dealing with smaller numbers or simpler numbers rather than really big, gigantic ones. So whenever you see a fraction that can be simplified, we need to do so. So what that means is that we need to be quite familiar with our multiplication tables or our divisor rules, and that just helps us find the common factor to simplify the fraction that we're given. If in a given fraction, both the denominator and the numerator can be divided by the same number, that is an instance where you can simplify the fraction. So that means knowing your division rules, uh, most commonly, I believe, two, three, and maybe five would be the, the easiest ones to just spot right off the bat uh, come into handy. Now, I'm sure you can tell when whenever a number is divisible by two because that's always an even number or when a number is divisible by five because the last number will always be zero or five. But what about the case of three? So you can always immediately tell if a number is divisible by three by doing the simple step. You, for example, if we have the number, pick on the random number, 1073, we're going to guess if this number is divisible by three. What you do is take the numbers and add them up individually. So one plus zero plus seven plus three gives us 11. Then we tr decide if this number is divisible by three. 11 is not divisible by three. So that means this big number here is also not divisible by three, even if it kind of looks like it might be divisible by three because the last number is three. So those would be just kind of tricks that you can use whenever you try to simplify really big and complicated fractions. Okay, so that's enough of an introduction. Let's try out what we just learned in this example question. Here we have a shaded region of a shape. The question is, what fraction would be shaded if Jill coloured in 25% of the total region? Okay, so since we have a shape that's already been partially shaded in and we're shading in another 25%, we need to know how much has been shaded already to uh, before we even consider adding in another 25% of this total shape. So let's start off by looking at the shape and realizing that there's some parts that aren't fully shaded and some squares that are for this one. And those are much easier to count. So let's start off by counting the fully shaded squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Just jotting it down because my memory is bad. Let's look at the remaining square. So these are partially colored, which is a bit more annoying to deal with, but we can see that if we take this little, little sliver of a triangle and move it here, we have one complete square. And that's the technique that we're going to use to try and estimate how much of this shape has been shaded already. So for example, we can see this square could fit exactly into here, making one full square. This sliver could fit into this sliver, making one full square, and so on and so forth. So every uh, two of these partially colored in squares makes up one square. So that is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven more fully colored in squares. So we've got 30 squares that we can tell have already been colored in for this shape that we're given. Now, we want to represent this number as a fraction. So we want to represent the part that is shaded 
over the total number of squares. So let's quickly figure out how many squares are in this shape. Clearly we've got some sort of a square or rectangle thing going on, so all we need to do is count the rows and columns and multiply those two numbers to get the total answer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 across. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 down as well. So it looks like the number of currently shaded sections are 30 and the total available squares is equal to 100. Okay, so now we figured out what's already shaded. The question said, what happens if Jill shades in another 25%? So that means we take the 25% and we need to convert it into a fraction just so it's easier to do the calculation. 25% as a fraction can be written as 25 over 100. So adding in 25 more shaded sections results in this number sentence. And we can thankfully go ahead with the addition because the denominator is the same, which is a rule for addition and subtraction with fractions. The denominator has to be exactly the same or you can't do the solution. So this gives us 55 over 100 as the answer. Now, if we take a look at the answer options, that's not one of the available answer options. So that would be because this is clearly a simplifiable uh, fraction. Both of these numbers are divisible by the number 5. So what we need to do is divide the numerator and denominator by the number 5, which should give us what is it, 11 over 20 as the actual answer. And thankfully, that is an answer option that we can see. So that is going to be the final solution. Okay, so what we can see with the important things to take away from is realizing that fractions uh, need simplifying to be correct, and they also need to have uh, similar, or sorry, the exact same denominator so that it can be added. We also see the concept of fractions being played out by looking at how many sh tiles were shaded in compared to, to the total number of tiles available. So hopefully this all helps you answer future fraction styles questions. Thanks everyone so much for listening.